Great, thank you, Corey. It's always a pleasure to be home and uh, to be in Regina. A lot of faces I recognize. Of course, uh, good friends and colleagues, Lyle Stewart and Laura Ross. Always good to see you guys. Thank you for all you've done to help us move the week more file for, for one instance. Uh, as a lot of you know, uh, yesterday we uh, moved our budget, uh, the 2012 continuation of Canada's Economic Action Plan. Uh, it's a plan to grow Canada's economy for today and into the future. We're coming out of the recession. We need a roadmap to take us that next ways in our journey. Our focus as a federal government remains squarely on jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity. And it's not just a plan for today, as I said, it's a long-term plan that will ensure long-term prosperity for all of us across Canada. Unlike many other places such as the United States and Europe, Canada's economy is emerging from a global recession much better than other industrialized countries. With the help of the government's low-tax agenda and Canada's economic action plan since July 2009, Canada has created and you, as the engine of our economy, small business, have created over 610,000 net new jobs. 90% of those are full-time positions. We've removed 1 million Canadians from the tax rolls. They didn't die. We actually just took them off the rolls, of which 380,000 are seniors. We've introduced pension income splitting. We've introduced the tax-free savings plan. We've cut the corporate income tax rate to 15%, the lowest in the industrialized world. As you all know in business, we cannot become complacent. The global economy remains fragile, and too many Canadians are still hunting for a job. That's why Economic Action Plan 2012 takes advantage of today's opportunity to position Canada and Saskatchewan for increased jobs, economic growth, and long-term prosperity. Our plan keeps taxes low for small and medium-sized business and facilitates the responsible development of Canada's energy and natural resource sector. Economic Action Plan 2012 will make major new investments in advanced research, science, and technology. For example, we will be investing over a billion dollars in research and development in the short term. Five hundred million dollars will be available for venture capital to help commercialize those innovative ideas. The agricultural sector was one of the most resilient to the economic downturn and the outlook for prices in the future, demand and farm income is positive. As farmers begin to see more black ink on the bottom line and increasing market opportunities, we must refocus our efforts on industry-led, results-driven science and innovation. The time is right to focus on initiatives that will help farmers capitalize on those future opportunities. Our plan also lays a strong foundation for continued job creation through more support for job training. We're extending the hiring credit for small business and providing new opportunities for Canadians to gain access into the labor market. As the Canadian Federation of Independent Business said yesterday, I'm sure it was Marilyn that said this, and I said, small businesses will be pleased if the employment insurance hiring credit was renewed for 2012. We thank you for that. In addition, positive changes have been made to the EI rate setting process, and future increases will be capped at five cents for employees and seven cents for employers. Already, the Chamber of Commerce has said this plan will help Canadian businesses prosper and compete. And again, we thank you for those positive. We will improve conditions for business investments with responsible resource development streamlined to one project, one review, done in a timely manner to get those jobs on track sooner. We're also making sure that the province of Saskatchewan can continue to provide essential services, including health, education, and other social programs. These transfers will total almost $1.3 billion in this fiscal year. Unsurprisingly, and I know you guys will be shocked too, the NDP is misleading Canadians about our efforts to increase funding for health care. <laughs> they see an increase as a cut. I'm not sure how they do that, but that's their economics. The facts are clear. This includes over $900 million in provincial health transfers. In contrast to the transfer in the last year of Ralph's government, the health transfer to Saskatchewan will now be 25% higher. The social transfer will be $365 million. That translates into an increase of almost 18% over what it was in 2005-2006. Unlike the previous government, we are reducing the deficit without cutting transfers to the provinces for health care. Healthy families need more time to spend together in your local communities. That's why in this budget we will invest $150 million for repairs and improvements to existing community facilities across Canada. While we're making sure that families and businesses can, can, can succeed here at home, international trade remains a key priority for the government and specifically for the Department of Agriculture. With nearly $36 billion in exports, Canada is the world's fifth largest exporter of agriculture and agri-food and we have the capacity to do more. Our government will continue to implement the most ambitious trade expansion plan in Canadian history. 
In fact, this past week, the Prime Minister and I were in Japan. To I'll give him credit for it, though. We were in Japan to launch free trade negotiations. While Japan is our second largest agricultural export market, it's only one of several irons we have in the fight at this time. We will work to strengthen trade with the United States, the European Union, India, China, and many more. It's all part of our government's pro-jobs, pro-trade, pro-marketplace approach, keeping our economy strong. When Mother Nature works against us, our government will continue to be there for rural communities affected by flooding. We will provide almost $100 million over the next three years to help with the cost of mitigation measures undertaken for the 2011 floods. We will invest $330 million to improve water infrastructure and quality for our First Nations communities. We will also make strategic investments in their elementary and secondary education. We want to make sure families and communities in Saskatchewan have the best possible opportunity to succeed and continue to drive Canada's economy. And as you folks know all too well, red tape can be a serious detriment to your business. That's why we're committed to reduce red tape through the Canada-US Regulatory Cooperation Council, making it easier for businesses to operate and create those jobs. We also remain committed to the One for One initiative, where we won't, as a government, bring in a new regulation without getting rid of at least one old one. We know this will help reduce unnecessary regulations currently on the books and stop new redundancies <coughs> from finding their way into the system. Your government is making changes today to make sure our retirement income system is there when communities <coughs> need it in the future. This includes making gradual adjustments to the old age security system and moving public sector pensions plans more in line with the private sector, including mine as an MP. Another key part of the plan is making sure to further secure Canada's strong fiscal position. Just as families and businesses in Saskatchewan have had to tighten their belt, so too is government needing to find efficiencies and cost savings. It is your money. Government was elected on a platform to return to balanced budgets in 2014 and 2015, and that's exactly what we're doing. Watching the situation in many European countries, Canadians know the importance of responsible spending by their governments. That's why we're streamlining government operations, ending wasteful spending such as the long gun registry, and finding savings that will help us balance our budgets. We will do this without raising taxes, without cutting transfers to the provinces, as previous governments have done. For example, at Agriculture Canada, we are consolidating our grants and contributions programs. By delivering our programs out of one branch, our, our department will offer more efficient services. Farmers and industry overall will benefit from this change, which will simplify the application process, reduce paperwork, reduce costs, and expedite the whole process. Our government savings measures are fair, balanced, and moderate. In conclusion, your government sees Saskatchewan for what it is, a great province, leading our national economy. Economic Action Plan 2012 seeks to keep it that way for today and for generations of Canadians to follow. Thank you so much for your kind attention, and please enjoy your day. Thank you.